Thanks for choosing DiQual. Before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. It is really important. Hit that notification button as well, because there are loads more videos coming. You can get more detail about DiQual and our courses at our website at mydiqual.com. Please enjoy this video. The risk of a vehicle being used as a weapon seems to be increasing. Whether it is used as a car bomb, a method of mowing people down, or used to smash into a jewelry store to steal diamonds, hostile vehicle crime seems to be on the up. There are many ways that a vehicle could be used as a threat, but they can be simplified into two categories. Penetration and Deployment Penetration is when a vehicle deliberately drives at a target, with a view to cause damage to structure or cause injury and loss of life. Deployment is when a vehicle is used to deliver a weapon, usually an improvised explosive device. Not all hostile vehicles are used to kill and cause injury. Some are used in ram raids to attack a shop or a building to facilitate an entry so that thieves can steal the valuable contents. Construction vehicles are often used to attack a cash machine in an attempt to remove it totally or open it to get the cash out. One of the biggest risks in terms of hostile vehicle mitigation is a long straight road with a good surface and a downward incline that heads directly towards an asset with a 90 degree impact angle. So, how do we design HVM measures? You will need a vehicle dynamics assessment to understand what vehicles can get to an asset and how fast they could be traveling. However, hard landscaping is one of the most cost-effective methods of HVM. Best practice guidance says that a landscape measure, such as a bank or hardscape feature, should rise at least 1,200 mm from the road level and at an angle greater than 50 degrees from horizontal. You can see in this image, that hardscaping has created a water feature. However, if you look closely, you will see that it is actually an HVM measure, that protects the building on the left. It is behind the palm trees. When the water feature is running, it creates an impressive piece of landscaping that attracts the local wildlife. It has a dual purpose. It is nice to see and to hear but it will also stop a hostile vehicle getting into the grounds of the facility that is behind the trees. If it is not possible to alter the landscape, then hardscape features can be added. They will act as HVM measures, providing that they have sufficient dimensions and mass to stop a vehicle. The general guidance is for at least 500 millimeters high, and if there is a pedestrian route between the measures, then a clear gap of 1,200 millimeters is required. You can see here the use of planters, seating, and retractable bollards to allow authorized vehicles to enter the secure area. This location also clearly shows a standoff space between the road on the left of the images and the facility, which is on the right. A point to note is that the foundation of an HVM measure is equally as important as the structure above the ground. It can be thought of like an iceberg in that most of the strength is under the surface. Whatever is above the ground usually dissipates the energy of the vehicle on impact through the ground. Normally you cannot see what is below the ground, but the following photograph was taken during an HVM installation. The example in the photograph showing the HVM foundation is a scheme that was devised to resist an angled impact as it runs parallel to a road. The protected area is on the left of the image. This is why the smaller base can be used to avoid existing obstacles, such as trees and manhole covers. The larger base was used wherever possible, and all of the measures were bolted together, before they were cast in concrete. Where there is a need to allow authorized vehicles through an HVM line, it is necessary to have an active section of measures. For example, this means that either a barrier will open, or bollards will lower into the ground. This is a selection of active HVM measures. You can see two different wedge blockers, a raising arm barrier, and some retractable bollards. There are three main standards that rate the capability of a device for stopping a hostile vehicle. The tests involve driving a vehicle at the HVM device 
and measuring the distance that it penetrates the secure line, as well as the distance that debris is dispersed into the secure area. Here, we will look at the IWA standard, but they are all very similar. IWA 14-1, 2013 9 different vehicle categories Impact speed from 16 to 112 kph Penetration is measured from the front edge of the HVM structure The performance rating is given as a code made up as follows V is for vehicle It is a vehicle impact test 7200 is the mass, or weight, of the vehicle that was used in the test 80 kph is the speed that the vehicle was traveling when it hit the HVM measure. 90 degrees is the angle that the vehicle hit the HVM measure, i.e. straight on. 0.64 meters is how far the vehicle got past the device, and 5.1 meters is how far the debris was thrown into the secure area. Here, you can see a wedge blocker being tested, and the vehicle has penetrated about 1.5 meters. That is a 7,200 kilograms truck and it was traveling at 80 kph when it hit the blocker. This module demonstrates that in some circumstances, there is a real need for hostile vehicle mitigation, but it does not have to be oppressive or industrial looking. Having a good understanding of the different categories and types of HVM, along with the impact rating classifications, will allow a designer to pull together an appropriate scheme that is in keeping with the local surroundings and promotes good aesthetics and good crime prevention through environmental design. You can get the full details on this subject matter from the DiQual module SF210. You can find us for free online. Search for DiQual, as well as our website, you can find more videos and information on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Wherever you find us, please don't forget to like us, share us, subscribe and comment. It is important to us so that we can produce more online content. Thank you.